I was inspired to get into the sciences from a very early age, and that's primarily because of my parents. My parents were teachers, and so they encouraged me to ask, ask questions about the world around me. And they were gardeners. So I loved looking at their rose garden, and I was always fascinated about why their roses grew so well. So later I understood that this was actually molecular mechanisms that rendered these plants very fit to grow well. So I was really inspired from a young age and I was mentored by good mentors. I had a very inspirational biology teacher during my high school career and further on into my degree, my BSc science degree, I had excellent mentors and this kept me inspired to continue in this avenue in molecular biology. Molecular biologists understand at the very fine level what makes things tick. I think about it as the inner workings of an organism and that's where a molecular biologist will be focusing. They'll look at the DNA level. So they look at the genes that are regulating or the genes that are underlying a certain process. So plant genetics is a study of genes inside plants and it's really important to understand what is the makeup, what is the genetic makeup of a plant because if we know this there's incredible variation. There's some variation where a plant can be resistant to a certain pest or disease because it has a certain gene complement and that's why it's important to study plant genetics. It's especially important for Africa because Africa has so many challenges regarding drought, pest, diseases, or we have problems with yield. So understanding what genes drive these processes is incredibly important so that we can harness this information and create better crops. So through conventional breeding or even new technologies. I think we're living in such an exciting age and this is because of the rise of the CRISPR technology. And this is a, a mechanism that is naturally found in bacterial systems. And it's a bacterial surveillance system. So it's a very clever design where a bacteria can recognize that there's been invaded previously by some virus. And there's little bits of DNA sequence that tells it that it's been invaded. It's now invaded again. So it's sort of a memory. And then it degrades that virus or it degrades that foreign particles. So we try and adopt the same kind of technology, we try and use the same kind of mechanisms to now do precise genome editing. So for example, if you have a gene that may render a plant susceptible, imagine if we can engineer it, imagine if we can edit that gene so the plant can then be more resistant. So that's the underlying principles of the technology. I think that is the, that is the biggest challenge in that genetically modified um, crops uh, have had very bad publicity. And I think the challenge is that people don't get beyond that to understand what does it actually mean? What are the changes that are being made? Is it safe for me? And I think that if they do more homework or they are a little bit better um, educated on that, they will understand where it falls in the natural scheme of things. Because when we do breeding, we are changing many genes at one time to create a specific variety. We don't know all the changes that we are making when we create a new variety. But when we do a genetically modified or genetic engineering, we are a little bit more precise. We'll know a little bit more about what we're trying to modify or the trait that we are trying to to create. So understanding that and understanding genetic principles is really important for us to em embrace different types of technology. And I'm not saying that this is the one um, type of technology that we need to embrace. There's many different technologies. Biotechnology is so broad and it's so deep. But I think what we need to understand is where there's a place for all of these things. Um, an example that's outside of Africa is the example the uh, Cryphonectria parasitica. So this pathogen caused disease on, on the American chestnut. And there was no real solution to, to get rid of this disease except for genetic modification. So there's a place inside of our technology tools for genetic engineering. So I'm very interested in defense in long-lived tree species. So, so trees are a little bit different because 
they are long-lived and they're going to be attacked by different pests and pathogens during their lifetime. So I'm interested in some novel mechanisms of defense inside of tree species. I'm specifically working in eucalyptus and in pines, but what's really important is that these mechanisms can also be found in other species, so they can be transferred to, to crops. And that's quite important because with crops, you may have resistance that breaks down much quicker. And now if we understand the kinds of mechanisms that confer broad spectrum, long lasting resistance, I think we have another tool to help us to improve crops and, and protect yield in Africa. So I'm so excited for the next generation that's coming through because the, the new jobs are going to involve integration. And that's where geneticists are playing a role. The kind of studies that we are doing involves integrating information, so different layers of information. So I'm talking about the molecular level, looking at the DNA, looking at the protein, looking at interactions. And this calls for an integration of statistics, mathematics, because we, we do modeling of that to really get down to understanding an organism a little bit more holistically. So it's, it's a systems biology approach. So for young people, they have quite a lot of opportunity to be studying something where they will integrate a lot of the STEM fields. And in genetics itself, I think that there's so many opportunities because of food security, climate change that becomes, becomes more and more important and for, for us as we, we go forward as a, as a human population. So there's many opportunities out there for them.